Hello, I'm Bob Denton, and welcome to another conversation. You know, the role of community colleges has expanded over the years in providing access to academic preparation, workforce and economic development, as well as vocational training. We're joining me in a conversation of the evolving role of community colleges are Dr. Robert Sandel, president of Virginia Western Community College, and Dr. Pat Huber, president of the New River Community College, and thanks to both of you for joining me. Glad to be here. Delighted. Well, you know, when I was preparing for uh, our conversation, I have to say I've been in higher ed for 40 some years, right up the road in terms of Virginia Tech for a great portion. And I was still surprised at the scope and reach in terms of our community colleges, not only across the Commonwealth, but here. But I noticed that most of community college enroll nearly half of all um, college students, period. How many uh, community colleges are there in Virginia? Let's start at that level. There are 23, 23 community colleges, 40 campuses. Wow. And what is the governance structure in terms of the community colleges? Uh, the governor structure is basically where the governor appoints the uh, board that um, runs the community college system with policy and procedure. But the local community colleges have an advisory board that we work with that work throughout the communities. But the uh, key board is the one appointed by the governor. The ones that work for the uh, local colleges appointed by the municipalities. And that's very, and, and that's interesting because that is somewhat different than some of the state where they'll have a board of visitors, each has a unique one. You have statewide one, but then you have your local board. Right. And are they uh, primarily um, advising on what type of things do they, they, they help on? What they can do, they can control the local funds. They don't control uh, state funds. Oh. But they're mostly our liaisons into the community and they help us keep good strong relationships with our business and industries and our other people. Wouldn't you say, Pat? Yes, definitely. And that's a good way because you can also then have a better aspect and anticipation of what the needs are within the community that you can develop special programs for. Yeah, and, and they're quick to bring back suggestions and ideas <laughs> that, they, that they hear out there in the community. And they're connected with their communities. So right, right. they're advocates for us. Well, talk a little bit about the size of the student body and the faculty a little bit about your institutions. What are we talking about in terms of size and right, scope? Okay, uh, we have almost 6,000 students. This past year, we were a little over 5,900. Mm -hmm. uh, we have 48 full-time faculty but in any given semester, we have probably 100 adjunct faculty. Right, right. Um, and then, of course, we have administrative professional mm -hmm. and um, support staff, classified staff. So um, in an, any given semester, we'll have two to 300 employees, some part-time, some full-time. Yeah, and we do about um, 10,000 students, headcount, 10,000 students. We have 90 programs. And we run about 300 faculty, that's full-time and part-time. Uh, and uh, the part-time are harder to get than the full-time because you want to get specialty, special talents to do some of these adjunct work. And so it's, uh, we keep a full cohort of, of adjunct people out there, but they come in and go out and come in and go out. So it's, uh, uh, and then we work with advisory committees that help advise us about what the programs need and so forth and so on. So it, it works well with the faculty, full-time, part-time, advisory committees. And uh, we deal with a lot of students. And we go, as Pat knows, we go 12 months a year. We go yeah. 8 in the morning to 10 at night <laughs> all the time. We don't stop. Uh -huh. And uh, that's kind of what we do. And actually, we would say we're 24-7 because of online learning. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, that's a good point, Pat. You know, mm -hmm. and, and as Bobby mentioned, uh, with adjunct faculty, I know that's how I started in the community oh, college. Yeah. I was an adjunct faculty member. Mm. Yeah, and even after COVID now, we still have half of our students still online. Mm. Right. So, I mean, half of these students are doing online all the time. So, um, before we get to some of the uh, more uh, programmatic things, um, I noticed there was recently a study demonstrating the economic impact of community colleges. Uh, talk a little bit about that study and because the volume of that is quite I think impressive. you just did a study, didn't you? Yeah, uh, yes, uh, the state did a study and then colleges individually. Now, I think for the state, for the VCCS, it was something like 10 billion, 10 billion, 12, yeah. 10, 12 billion dollars. For New River Community College, it was uh, about 122 million wow. is what we returned to the community. 
Wow. Um, about one out of every 56 jobs in our region um, wow. from the community college. Yeah, Significant. And, yeah, and um, you know, we make a real difference. And you know, and our age range goes from 18 to 80. So you know, we have, <laughs> we have quite a range of students. So we have a lot of students. And um, uh, it, it, just, it just works well for us to give everybody an opportunity to come to class when they can come. Whether that's in the morning, evening, or night, or whether they have to come three hours, six hours, 12 hours, 18 hours, whatever they need to do. So it, it works well for us. So has, in terms of the role of community colleges, has there been some sort of shift of focus perhaps over the years? What would you say is the, the role today of community colleges? I, I think the role of community colleges today, the core mission, is what it's always been, which is to give an opportunity, okay, to serve the community and the communities that we serve. Now, the community New River serves is different from the community right. Bobby right. Sandal serves. Mm -hmm. But I think also it's important to look at the history and how we evolved. Our college evolved from um, a vocational technical center. So we have uh, always been very solid in what's now called career technical programs. Bobby, yeah. you all grew from? Roanoke Tech, which was part of Virginia Tech, mm. you know, 50 years ago. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and uh, one part of the campus was uh, UVA. And then when the community colleges got um, uh, approved for this Commonwealth, the extension colleges moved out, the four-year extension colleges moved out, and then the community colleges came in, in, in our particular region. But um, it's, a, it's a, um, a, a good setup uh, that, that has worked. And, uh, but you know, we have a great campus, we have great facilities, but we've had to work hard to bring those facilities up to standard. Pat and I both have put a lot of time and effort in growing our campuses, getting the latest equipment and, and facilities and so forth to be responsive to our citizens. And um, so, and, and you mentioned you have them from um, young and teen <laughs> up to 80. Gosh, I can still qualify. <laughs> and so, um, but talk a little bit about the makeup of what we would call, I guess, the more non-traditional students. Has that component grown and does it continue to grow as part of your overall? Yeah, well, well, as Pat mentioned, you know, the, uh, I would say at Virginia Western, probably a third of our students are there to transfer. They, they're coming there to transfer. Two thirds of the students are there to get the skills they need to go into the world of work. I mean, that's what they're there. They're there to get jobs. And what we do now is a two-year associate degree is not the, the end of the line. I mean, you can come in and get career readiness certificates. You can get industry certifications and use those to build and stackable credentials to work toward your associate degree or whatever that may be. So we try to offer every opportunity. As Pat mentioned, we are access, we, you know, we're affordability and access. That's what we're about. We try, try not to keep folks out of going to college if they want the opportunity to do that. And what we worked at diligently over the last decade or so is getting the monies in place mm -hmm. to help those students who even with our low tuition still need help. So that's kind of one of the main things we're doing now. Mm -hmm. But in, in speaking of our age, um, yes, I think in, since my time in being the community college, because I can remember when it started, dual enrollment. Mm. is now yeah. uh, uh, a big opportunity working with our public schools to offer college classes in the high schools. But not only transfer courses, but also the career and tech ed courses. So overall, I guess we would say the age of our student uh, is, is younger, the average mm. age. Uh, when I began in the community college, the average age of our students was about 27, 28. And now I think the average age, if you count the large enrollment from dual enrollment, is more about 22, 23 years old. Yeah, and ours is probably 24, 25. <clears throat> but, the, but you're right, Pat, the dual enrollment is, I mean, you got, you got these kids finishing up high school with enough credits to go right on to be a sophomore or a junior at, at a four-year college if that's what they want to do. And they're paying a very low tuition to do that while they're going to high school. It saves their parents money. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and 
people still need to realize money is still the driving force of many students not being able to go to college and for their parents. So community colleges offer that open door, that first step to get students into college, keep them off debt and have them move forward to wherever, whatever their goals and aspirations may be. That's what we want to do. And our probably our largest transfer are Tech, Virginia Tech and Radford and Roanoke College, obviously, and, and Holland. So our local colleges get most of our students. And I think Pat Radford, you got a, an agreement Radford with Pat. University, Pat. Virginia Tech, um, uh, online with yeah. Liberty University and yeah. Old Dominion yeah. University. Yeah. Uh, we're about a third of the cost yeah. of a typical four-year institution. So um, access and affordability, opportunity, those are the key words. That's our mission. Well, and I noticed in fall of 2023, the Virginia Community College system uh, approved a new six-year plan. Uh, what are some of the takeaways from that six-year plan as you go forward? What are some of the things that uh, stand out in that plan? Well, I think, I think uh, a broad breadth of this thing is, is we're geared more toward workforce training now than we've ever been before. Mm. Uh, I know politically workforce is a, uh, a driver in this commonwealth. And uh, our new chancellor is a driver for workforce training. And workforce can, can mean anything. It can mean training, short-term training in an industry. It can mean all of our health-related programs, our nursing and, and all our different health, our nine health programs. That's all workforce. Our engineering, our, uh, you know, all of our business programs. So, but the key difference now is we're trying to offer that workforce six weeks, six months, one year, two years, whatever you need to do to help you get that job. Uh, we make it happen, and we make it make it at a very low tuition. Wouldn't you think, Pat? Yes, yes. Yeah. And I think for me also, um, in responding to our community, what I see in our six-year plan is that our community is a larger community because yeah. now, um, at one time we thought only regionally, like I thought only about New River. But with our six-year plan now, we are aligning with the Go Virginia regions. Yep. So, uh, and we've always worked yeah. well together. And it's we've three shared of us really programs. together now. Uh, but now it's Virginia Western, New River, um, and Central and Virginia. Central. So Lynchburg, you know, New River, and, Virgi and Virginia Western, Roanoke, we are a, we have synergy there. We're working together to move this region forward, and we. And as I always say, if you don't worry about who gets the credit, yes. you can have a lot of success. Yes. So we all work together as a team. And part of their six year plan from this chancellor is he wants us working together, making things more efficient and effective and not being so territorial if we can do that. Hmm. So, I mean, and that works well. So and a lot of colleges are struggling with the notion of that talk about the enrollment cliff. Because mm -hmm. the fact of the matter is there's not that many um, high school graduating men and women are not going to school at the same yeah. numbers, and especially among the men, yeah. um, that uh, some say is a, is a little bit alarming. But because of variety, that's not as much of a future burden in terms of, of the community college, is it? Because you have a broader scope in terms of both programs and potential students. And well, yeah, go ahead, Pat. Also, um, what we, I think both of our colleges, all of our colleges, we have a n number of uh, citizens um, in the adult population who need to reskill, mm. uh, retrain, yeah. uh, return to college. Maybe they started and yeah. uh, then returning. So we don't look at our student population as just the typical 18 year old. Yeah. We're looking at a much broader uh, span. Yeah, and, and I think that answers what you, your question was that uh, the, the age variance for us is, is, is not a negative. I mean, you know, we get a lot of the K-12 graduates. We get a large, probably the largest percentage of anybody in our region. But our main uh, thrust at the moment is working with these 25 to 45 year olds, trying to get them into college. I get them into certain courses to help them get that job they need or get that advancement they need or do the things they want to do to move forward with their families as far as having a better paying job. So, you know, we kind of work it. I mean, we don't, you know, Southwest Virginia is tough because we're going to be losing population and we are losing population. We're going to lose some high school graduates, 
But we, whatever we lose, I think Pat and I would say, we're going to make that up with these adults, these 25 to 45 year olds, and then others uh, out there that want to work with us. You know, as manufacturing has changed, mm -hmm. we've changed. That's what drives um, our career tech ed programs. So we want our um, citizens to, to be ready. Yeah. yeah, it's just like this, it's like this biotechnology uh, that's going on down here in Roanoke now, the biotech center. But you know, for all the PhDs they have, you need seven technicians for every PhD. It's kind of what the train of thought is. So community colleges, we put out those technicians and those technicians, there's un unbelievable demand for technicians of any type <laughs> skill throughout this region. Uh, so, you know, we do everything from advanced biotechnology and in engineering to welding and, and, and uh, air conditioning and electrical. I mean, you go from the, f the full catalog there of courses from heavy welding to the most advanced electrical mechanical engineering program. So, you know, we, we've got a little bit of everything. So it's a course is available mm -hmm. and you got a wonderful technology program up at, at New River. And, and, you know, Bobby mentioned welding, I mean, you know, we're looking at robotic welding. Yeah. Mm. Not just. <laughs> yeah. And these people are, these are nationally certified welders. Yeah. I mean, these people are making big money. Mm. Yeah. Well, tell me about some unique programs. Um, do you have some, um, um, I saw about the credit to careers and fast forward and what have you. Explain a little bit about some of the unique programs that you can offer yeah. in that regard. Well, you know, in, in the healthcare, you know, we just we just added um, um, programs like um, occupational therapy, physical therapy, surgical technology. You know, we got all those programs, and we have one of the one of the top culinary arts programs in the country, which we actually have centered downtown in Roanoke. It's just one of the best programs anywhere. And you know, we get into mechatronics, we get into engineering, get into business, and this biotechnology I mentioned to you is a uh, kind of the thing now, it brings in high paying jobs and so forth, and it's kind of got this region excited, the, you know, the whole Roanoke Blacksburg technology region. It's, it's uh, uh, and I think it's important to know that the, the uh, New River Valley and the Roanoke Valley are like this. We work together closely, probably more so now we have in, Ever. in, in forever since I've been here, because we want to move this region forward and to move it forward, we need to all work together to make that happen. So it's, uh, so these new programs we have um, uh, do that. You know, in healthcare, all of our healthcare programs are full. They all have waiting lists. I mean, it's, it's, and that's nine programs. Another special program is radiation oncology, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's dental hygiene. All these programs are available to students. So it's, um, it's, it's, you know, and Pat has a number of what top notch business programs, mm -hmm. don't you Pat? I think what, to sum it up, it would be whatever our employers need is what our programs are. You know, all of our programs have advisory boards mm -hmm. uh, and they meet with our faculty and they advise our faculty, our faculty about what our curriculum, what our program should be. And we make changes accordingly. And I think one thing that's unique is you know, in higher education, you got to go through all of these hoops to get any type of an associate degree program approved, and it takes forever. Yeah. But in the community colleges, the local boards can approve certificates and certifications and mm -hmm. so forth. So they can do that quickly for us. So if XYZ company needs this particular skill and this difference, this particular certification or certificate, we can get that done through our local boards just like that within a three month period whenever those meetings happen. So we can be very responsive and flexible to meet industry and business needs. And that's and a big difference that we can do that. Yeah, and even our, our workforce, it may not be a, a full certificate. Right. It may be a one course, one training program. You know, I, I know we've recently worked with um, police departments with drone technology, you know, using drones and, and with yeah, and yeah. search and rescue. So yeah. whatever, you know, our employers need, or our businesses or our industries need, we're, we're ready to provide it. Well, what's interesting in hearing, of course, as a former academic administrator, as I keep saying, God, to get one course approved, I mean, you're gonna go start in the department, you can go to the college, you're gonna go to the university, I mean, yeah. and, and, and the degree could take two to three years, and, yeah. and, and I know 
It was four years to get the School of Communication up and running from a department study. Anyway, that's mind blowing. Well, what I'm hearing, which is interesting, is that you really do have some key strategic partnerships um, and collaborations, uh, colleges and universities, of course, public organizations, but businesses. And so you can really, if I, let's say that I'm uh, the average small that has 250 or so, 90% of businesses have fewer than 250. If I come to you and I need special training or help, um, you can do a boutique or that is yes. to say you can customize exactly. something in terms of training. And, and, and do it in your plant. Yeah. On first shift, second shift, or third shift, whenever you want it. We'll come right in your doors and make it happen for you. Wow. And uh, customize it and, and work out a cost thing that's not uh, overbearing. I know Pat does a lot of that and, uh, and we do a lot of that. Yeah. Wow. And the areas of greatest demand, I'm assuming it's a technology and I'm assuming health or among Health care, um, advanced manufacturing. Advanced manufacturing. Manufacturing. IT, yeah. cyber security, things of that type. Wow, yes. Um, so some of the, have any pending new initiatives that you're saying, okay, we're exciting, we're working on right now. Do you have a couple of those that you're pending initiatives as you're working on and going forward over the, well, I, can, I can tell you one, it's not, it's not quite so new, but a lot of people don't realize we do truck driving. Mm -hmm. we, got, we got big time truck driving program that just puts out numbers of truck drivers all the time and there's a tremendous demand for, for certified you know, CDL drivers. And um, so that's one thing, the culinary arts, as I mentioned, everybody likes to eat, yes. everybody <laughs> likes to eat. So I mean, all these restaurants uh, will come and, and, and hire out. The problem is they try to hire them before they finish the program because they want them to come to work. And uh, if you go into Roanoke and a lot of these restaurants, they're head chefs and a lot of the people who work there are, are co go through the culinary center. But the, but the key thing is a lot of these companies call for, um, they need people to come to work. They need two or three, or t this company two or three, or this one four or five, and they can kind of come to our career center and interview these students and have them do internships. I know Pat and I, we do a lot of internships now mm -hmm. for students to find out if they like that, per that particular occupation or not. And what I like about internships is the company gets to see you and you get to see them. I mean, and, and then if it works out, great, but you know, it may not work out and you find that out before you ever finish, yeah. And one of the strategic programs we're working on and Molly and I will be talking probably after this program yeah. about um, regionally, um, some, some monies that are coming to us um, to Virginia Western, Central Virginia, New River, yeah. uh, coming to all the colleges and how we can best use these monies for our programs, shared programs, uh, con uh, building greater consortia uh, among us, so. Yeah, I mean, it's, if, if the demand is there and we have surrogates out all over mm -hmm. finding out what, the, what those needs are and they come back and talk to us and if we see that we can generate a program of study for that or a short course or a workshop or whatever, we would utilize those monies to the best benefit to make that happen, whether that's in Lynchburg, over in, in Pulaski, or in, in, in Roanoke. But you know, the technology, um, so much of the technology will allow the, uh, I guess the didactic portion, we could be doing it online, and then have our clinical sites, or our internships in our own areas. So we're, we're looking at a number of right. new ways of offering. Yeah. So we literally have only a couple of minutes or so remaining, and so I want each of you to be able to take an opportunity, not so much to give a closing statement per se, but what are some of the things you would, tips or considerations that you would share with potential students to absolutely consider choosing community college route? And start with you, sir. Well, I, I always say to the parents and the students, we're a great, great place to start. Mm -hmm. Community college is a, is a great place to start, and then and we have a wide variety of programs. We have low cost, and you get an opportunity to go in classrooms with small numbers. You get personal attention, and uh, you get college ready. So when you transfer, you do well. When you go into the world of work, you will do well, and we can get you a good job. I would say what I say to our students at orientation, because New River Community College or whatever community college is where you belong. That's our tagline. And, and we take students where they are, as they are, and help them find the next step. And is there, 
financial aid, I'm assuming that those who need their opportunities to, to have some financial support definitely. and help. Yeah, there's tremendous amounts of financial aid available for our students, and there are also scholarships available on top of that for, for needy students. And we have our programs for us, it's ACE. And, um, and we have the CCAP, Community College Access Program. Every, Any student in our region who, who, who graduates from high school has got an opportunity to come to Virginia Western at no cost. Same thing at New River. Same thing at New River. I mean, how do you beat that, Bob? You really can't. You really can't. And so when, um, when it comes time to the application process, it's not just cycled. Is it more like year round in oh, terms of, in yes. other words, uh, it's not the only in the fall, no. here in the spring, that kind of no. thing. It no, can, I, you walk in today, we'll take care of you. Yeah. I mean, they're working on the, you know, our, our summer's going strong right now, but I, I was coming in with my folks and they say we already got almost of the fall lined up here now also. So, you know, we just keep going. We just keep going because we have such a large number of students trying to get in the door and you're just trying to make it happen. And is there help in terms of helping me, okay, I now have this, help me find a job? Yes. Is there yes. support in terms of placement? Yeah, we, have a career, we have a career center that, that helps students uh, find the jobs they need or have industry people come in and interview students, whatever it takes. Also, as I mentioned, our advisory committees, yep. they are connected to our instructors. And when they need employees, they call. Yeah, that's probably and one they, of the biggest resources is these yeah, advisory And they committees. come in our classes, they will interview students and write in some of the classes. Well, believe it or not, we're out of time. Um, learned a great deal. I'm a bit embarrassed to have been in higher ed. The dynamic, the opportunities, the breadth and depth of the programs is quite impressive. And so congratulations and thank you for well, what you do. We appreciate do. you giving thank us you. time today. Thank You're you. You're very kind. I do want to thank my guests for joining us. And as always, I want to thank you for joining us and hope you do so again for the next conversation with Bob Denton.